Guys, what are we doing? Well, we're finally getting around to that TS-394, the Wong design. Uh, I called it a folding combat knife. Um, I do like this knife. I like it a lot. I go as far as to say I love it, but I don't think I can recommend it. So let's turn this around and I'll tell you why. Well, you guys saw the title. This is a knife that I really love, but could not truly in good conscience recommend, uh, unless you're gonna have this for a pack knife. This is that Wong Design TS-394 in D2 steel. And I said this was like a folding combat knife. And I have to address a few things with it. But first of all, we're gonna talk about the good things I found. We're gonna talk about the bad things I found. We'll do some size comparison. But first, of first, first and foremost, here is a spec sheet for you guys to see the best spec sheet I could find. So first things first, let's get the size comparison out of the way. Your first knife is going to be the Migron Valona, which is a nine inch overall knife. So just for size comparison, I want you guys to see this is not a small knife by any means. So your next knife is gonna be the CJRB Lago Button Lock. So there you go. This is not a big knife. It's also not a small knife. You're looking at a pretty good size comparison. And as always, your final knife is going to be the Chris Reeve Sabenza Large 21. So you can see this is truly a really, really big folding knife. So let's get this out of the way and let's talk about the good things I found, the bad things I found, and why I'm gonna say this is just a knife I love, but I can't recommend. All right, guys, I did have this knife in and out of pocket for like the last two weeks. And literally it was in my pocket because as you can see, no pocket clip. It does have thumb stud, flipper, activation and you can use that fuller to flip it and it is a big beefy knife super comfortable in hand with these nice rounded contour grips and the fact that you don't have a pocket clip means that you can use this heavy checkering you don't have to worry about it in and out of pocket and tearing things up the d2 blade on this is ground extremely nice and thin behind the edge and it does slice really really well the blade has been ground really well nice clean and consistent from side to side, not much of a hiccup with the swedge. There was nothing in the way of misgrind on this. Uh, you got a big full forward finger choil for choking up on stuff and you can get way up on it and put a lot of force down on it. The fact that it doesn't have a pocket clip means that there is no discomfort in hand at all. There's no hot spots. This knife does not have a single hot spot. I love how this feels in hand, but it comes with some downsides. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It has a very, very interesting and unique look to it. It's got a definite, definite, um, I talked about it. It looks like the, the, the Jim Crane life support system knife that was in Commando, this Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. It reminds me of that. It's got kind of the same lines. Um, as far as action, the action on it is really, really good. It has got a very good, clean action, nice and smooth, and it's really well centered. You've got all kinds of cool things that go with this. Um, cutting with this, it does cut really, really well, surprisingly, for a larger knife. A lot of times you get a large knife like this with a thick blade stock. It does not slice real well, but this thing cut great. Uh, if you want to take this apart, it's pretty simple. you got hardware on the outside, and then there's some hardware on the inside. These are overlay scales on top of a, basically it's a frame lock with overlay scales. Um, you can take this apart, get to the pivot and all that stuff. So there's internal workings inside of this. It's a lot like the Ferrum Ford's Gent in that fashion, where these scales just kind of cover the actual frame lock inside. Another thing that's great about it, this has a lanyard aperture, a lanyard spot in the backspacer, so you don't have a hole going through it. This is my preferred method. I want everybody to have the option of a lanyard, but I don't necessarily like a lanyard hole. Even on some of my favorite knives in the world, including my much prized Grimsmo Norseman, there's a lanyard hole. I would much rather have something like this, where you have a lanyard spot, but no ugly hole. And it is an attractive knife. Overall package, it's attractive. It looks cool, it looks aggressive. And the blade is the centerpiece of that really well ground, attractive, aggressive looking blade. So that's all the good stuff. But this knife is fairly unique. It has a laundry list of downsides and one of them 
is the reason I can't recommend it for everyone. So let's flip this around and we'll look at the bad things I've found about this. Okay, first and foremost, this knife is just, too, it's too big. This knife is too big for a lot of the things I wanted to do and how I wanted to carry it, places I wanted to take it. It is a really, really large knife. Now that's something like if you threw this in a pack, not a big deal. The biggest problem, we'll hit this one first. The biggest problem with this, you don't really have a way to carry it unless you want to use like a nylon Velcro belt pouch, um, but it's it's not it's not 1997 and it wants its method of carry back. So this has got a very, very limited, very limited carry. So that's the biggest issue I found with it. Um, there are a couple other things. This flipper tab is huge. And yes, while it does act like a finger guard, if you're gonna look at this almost like a folding combat knife, like I said, folding tactical, it's big and it feels awkward when you get up in that forward choil. Plus the jimping on it is a little sharp. So the flipper tab, not so cool, but it does go along with the lines of the knife so I can kind of see why they did it. Next one is kind of a big deal. I don't know if it was heat treat or if it's just how this knife was ground. It did not seem to want to hold the edge the way I wanted it to. I had to touch this up way more often than I was expecting to. It did continue to slice because like I said, it's got really good blade geometry. You can see that's very thin behind the edge. It's got really good geometry and it cuts well, but it got dull pretty quick. I think it's just because it is so thin that maybe if I had done a different edge, maybe blended that like, you know, give it a, a little bit more of a, a steep angle as opposed to a, to a thin angle. Like I made it a little thicker. I think it would have held up better, but it, then it might not have sliced as well. As a matter of fact, right now, it just really doesn't feel all that sharp. Uh, but in its defense, I did cut up a lot of cardboard. Um, the next thing is it's heavy. This is a very heavy knife. Even with some weight reduction in there, this knife is heavy. You saw it on the spec sheet. This is not a light knife. So, and then there's a couple just small little things that kind of bother me. The axe of the detent is kind of soft. You can see that like it almost wanted to fail. If you've got it, if you've got it out flat like this, horizontal, and you just give it a little bit, it does, it will slide open. But if you've got it upright, and you give it, you've got to really get on it because the detent is kind of sloppy and you can get a, a failure to, to, uh, to deploy. And then one of the last things I've, I've always said this, I'm not a big fan of this. While this lets you have access to your detent hole for the lock, you know, the closed position, uh, you definitely have an issue where things can get down in there a lot easier. So if you don't notice it and you go to drop, it won't like, it won't lock shut. It's going to prevent that from getting all the way in. So while it is kind of cool because then it's out here and you can clean it, it's also kind of in the way. And I just don't like seeing it. That's mainly for me. While it can pose a maintenance issue and a cleanliness issue of keeping that clean, uh, I just don't like seeing the detent hole. I find it unattractive. So there's not, like I said, nothing on it is huge. I, the biggest point, like the reason I can't really recommend this is, it's so difficult to find a way to carry it. Um, you can you can throw it down in your pocket, but it's really big and it is heavy. Even even in um, I do have a nylon belt sheath that I put this down in for uh, it's for another knife. Um, I still found it heavy and awkward. And like I said, that's not my preferred method of carry. Now, I could absolutely throw this in a backpack or something like that if I was going out. So just those things to keep in mind. And then, like I said, it's just. It's large, it's heavy, and it's got a difficult carry method. So that's all I've got on. Oh yeah, and on, on, and when you look at this, it's uh, it's a ninja with a smile. It's like a ninja turtle looking at you. So at any rate, guys, that's all I got on it. Like I said, I love this knife. It's fun. I like the concept. I just don't think I can a hundred percent actually recommend it. So let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, and I'll send you out about your day. So there you go, guys. The TS-394, this thing is cool. I wish t I wish Two Sons would stop using the nomenclature, t the TS-394. Just give it a name. Uh, I do like this a lot. I really wish that I could go ahead and say you should all go buy it, uh, but I, I just can't. It's got too many issues with the actual carry. So 
That's pretty much all I've got on this one, guys. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you set it for all and turn on notifications on your device so you will not get notified of everything I put up. Speaking about the likes, it's the best thing you can do for any channel, not just mine. If you've watched the video for more than 30 seconds and you haven't dropped a like, you're not doing the channels you like the service that they deserve you are actually doing them a disservice because videos that get more likes compared to their view ratio, when you get a more closer to one-to-one -to -one view to like ratio, your videos do better. So start liking all the videos for channels that you like. If you want to support the channel financially, I've got a ton of affiliate links down below. Coffee Brand Coffee is 5% off your order if you use my coupon code CRAZYSHARP or the affiliate link there. Um, and all of the Amazon affiliate links are just a portal to my affiliate store. So if you've got anything you need to buy from acetone to airbrush tools, you can get them, just click on one of my affiliate links, purchase those things and I get credit for it. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout and it absolutely supports the channel. If you wanna support the channel a little more directly, you can absolutely join my membership. It's tier-based. All the members have access to my Gilded server, which is just like Discord. We hang out, we chat, we goof off um, and they have direct access to me pretty much all the time. Um, baseline and premium tier members are automatically entered into giveaways that I do on the Gilded server. Sometimes I do them here. And the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series that I have here on YouTube. It's behind that paywall. So there you go, guys. That's it. Uh, keep it clean in the comments section. It helps me moderate the channel. Uh, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next video.